In this video, we're gonna do some more binary ionic compounds, but this time we'll be dealing with binary ionic compounds that have multivalence elements in them. So again, binary ionic compounds um, are ionic compounds, but what they do is they have two elements in them only, two different elements. There's a metal and a non-metal, like sodium chloride, for example. Uh, in the last video, we saw simple binary ionic compounds, how to name them and how to write formulas for them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on C and D, focusing on binary ionic compounds with multivalent elements in the multivalent metals. The ones that we dealt with had monovalent metals. What that means is that they had only one charge. So for example, sodium only as an ion can only be sodium plus one. Calcium as an ion can only be calcium two plus. Um, aluminum as an ion can only be aluminum three plus. But there's some metals in our periodic table, especially the ones in the transition metals, groups three to 12, um, that can have more than one charge depending on the conditions. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. So if we look at our periodic table here, you'll notice that um, some elements have multiple charges written on them. Um, so for example, copper could be one plus, two plus, two plus, three plus for zinc, um, two plus, three plus for iron. So you do have some metals that can have more than one um, possible charge. And a lot of them are found in this um, transition group over here, the transition metals. And so to name those is a special set of rules. So again, multivalent elements, they have more than one possible charge. Um, so if you look at copper in the periodic table, you can see that uh, some copper ions can be copper plus one and some can be copper um, two plus. So we're gonna name these ions differently from each other. We have to have a way of differentiating, of telling copper one from copper two apart. And so we're gonna use what's called the stock system of naming, where we use Roman numerals to tell us what copper we're dealing with. So for example, this here is copper one, plus, so we're going to put copper and then brackets one. This is copper two, so we're going to put copper, so we're going to put copper brackets and then Roman numeral two. So the Roman numerals indicate the ion charge. You don't need this for things like lithium or sodium or uh, potassium, right? That's because these only have one charge. Lithium is only plus one all the time. There's no point in doing that. It's like saying if I had um, two, uh, two Alexanders in the class. If I had two Alexanders in the class, I'd have to use a last name to um, differentiate between them. So I might say um, Alexander A and Alexander B. Um, same thing with these coppers. There's two coppers in the class. One of them is copper one, one of them is copper two. But if there's only one Alexander in the class, then um, all I have to say is Alexander because there's only one there. There's no point in saying the last name. There's no point in saying Alexander one um, because there's only one Alexander around. So for multivalent metals, to avoid confusion, we need to make sure we indicate which one we're dealing with. Um, so there's plenty of other multivalent metals. If you look in your product table, you'll see all the ones that have multiple charges. You can see some examples here like iron. You can see um, gold. You can see, uh, if we go to our periodic table, you can see um, thallium, you can see platinum, lead. A variety of these have more than one charge. So you have to pay attention to this in your periodic table, which is why you should always come and take a look at your periodic table when you're naming compounds to make sure that you're not dealing or you are dealing with a multivalent element in your ionic compound. So let's see how that changes the naming. So we're using the stock system, which is again, a way of naming multivalent elements using Roman numerals. There's a different way to name these as well. And you'll see that in more detail in grade 11, but right now we'll focus on the stock system. So let's say we want to name um, um, FEBR3. So FeBr3, the first thing I want you to notice is that it's ionic because there's a metal and a non-metal. It's also binary ionic. But the next thing you need to notice is that you have iron in there. And iron can be two plus or three plus. So it's multivalent. So what you need to do is you need to figure out which iron you're dealing with. So what I usually do when I name compounds like this is 
I start off by um, naming what I know. So I know bromine becomes bromide. Nothing is different there. The non-metals will be the same. I have to name my metal first, um, iron. But the problem is I don't know which iron it is. I have to, I'm going to put brackets there. So I'm going to just set up my final answer here. I'm going to put iron, brackets, bromide. So all I really need to do is figure out which iron I'm dealing with. Is it the 2 plus or the 3 plus? And so there's a couple ways you can figure that out. One way is called the reverse crisscross method. You're just going the crisscross backwards. So we had Fe1. I'm putting the 1 back there. Remember, if there's no number, is a 1. Br3. So now I'm going to bring the 1 up here. The 3 there. And I get Fe3 plus Br minus 1. Don't celebrate yet. We have to make sure this is, has not been reduced because remember sometimes some of your compounds could have been reduced. What I usually do to double check if it's been reduced or not is I check the uh, the anion. I check the, the negative ion here to see if it has the correct charge. Bromine or bromide should be negative one. It's in group 17. So since this has a correct charge, um, it wasn't reduced. So we're good. This is iron three plus. I'll show you an example where there was reduction in a minute, but right now just get that we're good. This is iron 3 plus, so we're putting Roman numerals 3 there. So this is iron 3 bromide. So when you know you have a multivalence element, find out what the possibilities are. Name your compound as you normally would for binary ionic, but make sure you put brackets um, next to your metal because you're looking for which iron you're dealing with. You can figure it out by doing the reverse crisscross, or you can do the balancing method. So you can draw this out. You can say I have one iron with an unknown charge. You know it's going to be a positive unknown charge because it's a metal. And you have three, brom three bromides. The bromides, you know they're charged for sure because they're not multivalent. They're negative one, negative one, negative one. Overall, these are basically three minus. So if this whole thing is equal to zero, what must this charge be if there's only one of them? Well, it must be 3 plus. So here we have iron 3 plus. So you can do the charge balancing method as well because it's a bit more visual. So let's do these examples together. Um, so I want you to notice that these are all ionic because it's a metal and non-metal. But notice that the metals they contain are multivalent metals. So we have to be careful there. Um, I'm going to start with the example over here, the CUO. We know right off the bat that this is going to be copper something oxide. Um, I don't know if it's copper one or copper two, so I need to figure that out. So I'm going to do the reverse crisscross to figure out which copper I'm dealing with. I put the ones back because they're there, but we don't see them. And I do my reverse crisscross and I get Cu, one plus, O, one minus. And so if you jump to conclusions, you might think, hmm, this is copper one. Let's go ahead and do that. But it's not. You have to check your anion all the time. This one here. If you look carefully, oxygen should be negative two. So that means this whole thing was reduced. If oxygen was negative two, how do I get back to negative two? Well, I multiply everything by two. Basically what we're saying is that if we have one minus here, oxygen should be two minus, it was divided by two. So let's do the opposite of that. Let's multiply everything by two. And so we get Cu two plus O two minus. And so this is actually copper two oxide. The other way you could have done this is simply doing Cu. You know it's positive because it's a metal. O2 minus, there's only one of them in our formula. You know this has to be zero overall. So if there's only one copper, this must have been copper two. Um, let's try this one here, the name of FEN. So we have iron something nitride. We need to find the charge of the iron. So Let's do a reverse crisscross, put our ones back there. Bring that one back up. Bring this one back up. And we get Fe1 plus N1 minus. Don't celebrate too early. Remember, 
Nitrogen, based on the periodic table, should be 3 minus. That means this was reduced from 3 minus to 1 minus, so we divide it by 3. So the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying everything by 3. And so that gives us Fe3 plus N3 minus, and we found that the iron involved is iron 3. Um, you could have also done your charge balancing. So we have um, one nitride and one iron. For this whole thing to be zero, this must have been three plus. Let's go ahead and try um, this over here. Here we have iron, something oxide. So let's do a reverse crisscross here. So we have Fe2O3. The 2 goes back up here. The 3 goes back up here. So we get Fe3 plus because don't forget this is a metal. O2 minus a non-metal. Let's just make sure this is right. The O2 minus makes sense. Oxygen should be 2 minus. So this wasn't reduced. So we know this is iron 3 oxide. Let's try this one here. You probably already guessed what it is just because if this is iron 3 oxide, this must be the other one. But let's just try it out to see. Um, so we had Fe1O1. Let's do a reverse crisscross. And we get Fe1 plus O1 minus. Oxygen should be 2 minus, so it was divided by 2, which means we need to do the opposite, multiply by 2. And we get Fe2 plus. O2 minus, so that means this is iron 2. For both, you could have done charge balancing as well. So for example, here, there's three oxygens, and they're each 2 minus. And here we have two irons, because it's Fe2, and we need to find what their charges are. This overall is... 6 minus or minus 6. So what must the charges be of the irons to make this 0 overall? If you said 2 and 2, that would have been 4 and minus 6. That's not 0. So we know it has to be 3 and 3. So they'll be the same. We're not going to go through any exceptions where they're different. So 3 and 3. Um, let's try this one here. CuCl2. So, so this is a copper something chloride. So we have Cu1, Cl2, oops, crisscross, and we get Cu2+, plus, Cl1-, uh, one minus. and um, this makes sense, Cl is 1-, minus, so this is copper 2, copper 2 chloride. And lastly, Let's try this one here. So we have a copper fluoride. We need to figure out which copper it is. So Cu1, F2, reverse crisscross. So we get Cu2 plus F1 minus. And so this is uh, 1 minus is correct. So it wasn't reduced. So copper 2 fluoride. And so you're naming these essentially just like you would any regular binary on a compound, but you need to make sure you find what the charge of that multivalent element is. Look at your periodic table to remember which multivalent elements you're dealing with. If you don't, you might forget and you're going to forget to put the charges in the brackets there. Um, and you should be able to do problems like this where you should be able to name a compound um, using um, the system we described. So what you can do is pause the video, try it out, then I'll put the answers there so you can um, double check if you're on the right uh, track. So um, here we have iron to chloride. Here we have, uh, this one's interesting, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you the work here. We have Tin, one, O, two. If I reverse crisscross, I get tin, two plus, and O, one minus.
So this was reduced. This was reduced because oxygen should be one minus. So this is times two here. Um, so that means that this is actually four plus and two minus. So this is tin four oxide. So you need to be careful there. So I know I'm writing, it's a bit messy here, but this is tin four oxide. Here we have copper one bromide. Here we have iron three chloride. Here we have antimony um, five sulfide. I recommend you do all the steps when you're doing this just to make sure you're on the right track. Here we have um, arsenic three oxide. Here we have lead four nitride. Here we have lead three chloride, lead two chloride. Here we have tin two fluoride. And here we have copper um, one oxide. And so your answer should match what I have here. Uh, and lastly, you need to know how to name or how to write formulas for um, uh, binary ionic compounds containing multivalent elements. And this is probably the easiest part. You're just going to write the symbols side by side for the ions um, and then just do your crisscross. And if you need to, you need to reduce and you're done. Um, so just make sure that you do the metal first and non-metal on the right as usual. So this is actually a little bit easier because you're told the charge of the metal, so you don't have to go hunt for it. So for example, here it's iron three plus because it's iron three, Cl one minus. I can just crisscross those and drop the charges and I get Fe one Cl three. And then you can just clean that up by removing the, um, the one Fe Cl three. You could have done charge balancing as well. So Fe three plus, Cl one minus, this has to be equal to zero. So I need to put two more there. And so now we have zero. So this would be Fe one of them and then three chlorides. So we're using the stock system. There's another system called the classical system that you'll learn later on, but we're not doing that right now. We're focusing on the system you would have learned in grade 10. Um, we're just gonna do a couple more examples. So remember the metal on the left, non-metal on the right. Um, so here we have iron two oxide. So it's iron two, and then oxide is two minus. If you were doing the uh, charge balancing method, you would have seen that it's already zero. So you would have just done one iron, one oxygen. If you're doing the reverse crisscross method, you would do crisscross and drop the charge, so Fe2O2. Then you would have to reduce, divide by two, and you would get FeO. And again, we're doing the stock system. So you should be able to do problems like this. What I would recommend that you do is you pause the video and then uh, compare to my answers to make sure you're on the right path. So I'll go ahead and write the formulas out you make sure you compare. So here we have iron three sulfide. So Fe two S three. I did the crisscross. I didn't show the work there, but if you were to show the work, you would do Fe um, three plus S two minus crisscross it. And then you get this over here, manganese four oxide. So be careful here. Manganese is not magnesium. It's Mn um, four plus oxygen is two minus crisscross it and drop the charges, you get Mn, 
204. Now you need to reduce, and you get MnO2. Tin 2 nitride, so SN3N2. Mercury sulfide, H G two S because mercury one sulfide. Nitrogen five oxide. This one's a bit different because there's two non metals. Um, normally we wouldn't be um, naming them like this with two non metals or making formulas like this, um, but this is an exception. So we'll just follow the same rule. So nitrogen is three minus. Or well, in this case, it's not three minus; it's um, five. So nitrogen five, oxygen is two, and we get N two O five, and that's nitrogen five oxide. This is a bit of a weird one because you have two nonmetals. Typically, you're going to have um, a metal and a nonmetal, so you won't see many like that. Um, copper one chloride, so Cu. Cl, and then these ones you have to name. Sodium oxide. I don't need to put the brackets because sodium is not multivalent, so I don't need to put brackets. Calcium sulfide. I don't need to put the brackets because calcium is not a multivalent element. And then magnesium chloride. Again, I don't need to put which magnesium because it's not magnesium is not a multivalent element